have any questions about the the why behind this contour study and how it can um, relate back to your regular art practice in a, in a what some people might say a proper painting. I have a quick question. When you do them, like I had set up a little uh, a book in front of me so that I couldn't see my hand. Um, when you're not using your other hand, like to feel your face, you're looking at an image. Do you other ever use your your second hand to kind of feel where your 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 starting point is to get a sense of distance at all, or do you just use the one hand and keep the other away? Oh, you could do that as a modification. Um, sometimes in figure study, you know, your your hand is out like the, let's say the plane of my picture plane is here you know and in figure study we draw like a sword fighter you know the charcoal is out here or sometimes you have a you know a stick with a sharpie on it so you're very far away from your picture plane right um, because we draw from here not here and so sometimes what we'll do in figure study and I think this you could do this especially if you'd set up a still life or you're looking across the room is um, let's say that lamp there let me change hands let me see if I can do this um, so let's get me out of the picture there's that lamp oh. so I could be looking at the lamp and my paper is here but in this case it would, might be on the desk right but I can move my hands in concert with the object right you come over to the couch so I'm actually drawing on the paper and I'm drawing in the air on mm -hmm. the picture plane in the air so that that's a really great exercise I'm glad you brought that up I hadn't thought of that as a modification you still wouldn't look at your paper mm -hmm. yeah um, in your situation where you're just drawing something small on your you know tabletop or whatever on a hand out in the air your offhand and and when you're doing that, you're tracing the movement of the hand, right? I mean, when I write for you guys um, backwards, that's essentially what I'm doing. When I do simultaneous backwards writing, you know, my name. <laughs> um, I'm mirroring the movement. Let's see if I can do each of your names. If you can read it in the air. So we'll start with Jim. Right? Mo, that's easy. Julie. Right? So, um, what I'm my doing. Real name is, my real name is Constantinople. Would you be that? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Challenge on. Challenge accepted. Um, spell it. Uh, spell it for me. Let's see here. I never myself. get it right. That's why I changed it to Jim. Okay. Okay. So um, C O N S T A N T. I don't know how to spell it. I M O P L E. Look good. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it doesn't have to be short. You know, I can do um, installation. I N S T A L L A T I O N. When I do that on paper, is um. You know, the same thing with simultaneous drawing. You could do a simultaneous drawing too. You could do, you know, Yana. <laughs> right? Um, so you can do mirror image. Or you can go this way. You can go in. Mo. Okay. Or Mo. What I'm doing is I'm uh, choosing a dominant side. Sometimes it'll switch for me where um, as I'm imagining it, I'm imagining it only on my, with my left brain, I guess, left eye. I'm seeing it with my left eye, 
and allowing the right, the other side, well, it's my right brain, but in terms of my vision, I'm picturing Mo with this hand and I'm just saying to this hand, follow me. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not trying to see both sides at the same time. I'm not trying, I can do Mo. Okay. When I went this way, I'm, I'm only seeing Mo with this hand. I'm writing it backwards. And I'm allowing this hand to mirror the movement, not what I see. Can you guys see the writing? Mm-hmm. I mean, I see it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's the same thing in drawing, you know, like uh, exercise like that, even if you didn't put it on the paper, could and um, in, will enhance your seeing and your, your coordination. It also helps you to picture the thing in the air, like in your imagination. So I see those words as I'm making my hand move. I'm tracing the form. I could do that with your faces. You know, I could sit here and go, you know, there's Julie and Mo, and there's the glasses, and there's the nose, and there's the mouth, and Mo's hand is there, and Julie's got the headphones on over there. You know, I can even actually do, I'm doing two different things at the same time, but that's maybe, you know, what a musician experiences, right? So we want to be both handed. We want to be whole brained. I wrote my blog post about being whole brained, right? You know, we're, we're learning to be fluid between the left and the right. Questions about that. That's like conducting or something, right? (laughs) I actually haven't done that before where I've demonstrated that. So I wasn't going into it. I wasn't quite sure how effective it would be, but I also can feel the fluidity within my person after years of integration and practicing. And I've always been able to naturally write backwards. So it's not been something I had to learn to do. Um, So that piece, you know, might not be for everybody, but you might surprise yourself when you think of it as synchronicity in your movements um, versus, and then when you're doing mirror image, um, uh, beginning, uh, big integration equals small integration. So out here, integration, doing those kinds of hand movements, you'll, you know, maybe can be, we can form a new exercise group or something. Um, <laughs> but big integration with yeah. those kinds of movements equals small integration. So you go out in your backyard and you stand for 10 minutes and you draw things on the picture plane out there. Maybe you do simultaneous forwards, backwards, uh, mirror image, reverse image. Um, We'll do more for your integration. and, And when you come back to the paper, then maybe even more effective than doing, you know, a bunch of drawings because the drawings are small, right? Mo, do you have something to say about that? Oh, I, I really want to try that. That echoes a lot of what I do with kids um, that struggle with dyslexia. Um, with I, I use neurolinguistic programming kinds of techniques that have to do with the patterning of that eye-hand coordination and attaching it to language development. Mm-hmm. And um, I have kids air write words and then manipulate the image, but it has to do with creating that image in the first place so that they can hold the image and then recall parts of it and reconstruct and substitute and so forth once they've Mm -hmm. created that image but that Mm -hmm. in itself is a it's a language building activity it's it's weird to me how that works but it's really effective so i think we have to be inventive with ourselves and um it's good to just explore these ways of learning these ways of um, making it ours and knowing ourselves well enough to be creative in in applying this kind of um, knowledge also it means that i'm not limited to my development when i'm sitting down at my at my studio desk to do something you know, my artistic creative development, my technical development can happen wherever I go, whether I have a pen or a piece of paper or not. And I think um, for me, that's one of the ways that I have made a lot of progress because I can draw anywhere. I don't actually need a utensil in my hand. 
So as soon as we start realizing that it's seeing and then we work on ways of integration, um, we can really make it good, you know, real advances in our technical ability. That's something I want to carry out. I just wrote that down. The whole thing about you don't really need a pencil to be drawing. And I've begun a little bit of that kind of integration because I always intend to draw and then I find myself, oh, I didn't bring the, you know, here I have to wait five minutes for this thing. Why not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we record in my muscles what I'm seeing. Exactly. That whole muscle mus memory. And then it's, um, you know, the other is uh, targeted practice, you know, like intentional, small, you know, it's better to practice efficiently than it is to, you know, volumes of practice don't actually make us better if we're not also in that learning zone. So, so really spending that five minutes to go out and do some kind of drawing on the picture plane with your hands, you know, put a, a stick in your hand and draw some, draw the neighbor's house. This would be a great exercise. Go out and look across the street with an object in your hand and draw the neighbor's house. Then sit down with your sketchbook and draw the neighbor's house. You know, maybe draw the neighbor's house on paper, draw it in the air, then draw it again. See if there's a difference. You would have to test the theory. Um, I think that there, over time, it would be a cumulative difference. I do that with horizon lines before I start sketching if I'm out and there's a big horizon line in the mountain and I, I try to trace what I see before I actually um, map it on the paper. Again, it's that whole embodied movement and also we, you make some mistakes because you think you're seeing it. You realize your hand and I aren't together and then you go, oh, that, that's really going that way, not that way. And I thought it was angled like this, but it's really going like that. How did I mix that up? You can answer some questions before you even touch the paper. Anybody have any more questions? Oh, this is a very active <laughs> lesson. <laughs> Keep practicing this. This is a, designed to be a prompt, uh, something to integrate into your practice. When you don't feel like drawing something, do this, just to stay in contact with your materials. Yeah. And to keep your mind, you know, sort of noodling around on the shapes of things. Julie, I like what you said um, in, on the Instagram post. I asked you if it was transforming, if it was mm -hmm. getting easier, I think, to do. And you mentioned that you are starting to really understand why it's important to boil things down to their simple shapes. Mm -hmm. You know, is that a square, triangle, rectangle? What is that? Which angle is that? You know, is it a curved line or a straight line? You know, adopting that um, 
drawing language.